Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church's Wired Worship. During this Lenten season, we are continuing our journey to the cross, even as we have for the last year had a time of isolation. We rejoice in this time that we are able to gather together in worship and word. If you are missing the sacrament, you are invited to join us for Zoom worship, which takes place at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. During that time, we have this and watch this worship service, and then we are able to receive the sacrament. Also, during Lent on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock, we have Hold and Vespers, a time for community, for prayer. And this year, we are focusing on prayer. And so we are going to be learning ways and deliberate ways to grow our faith life. I hope that you'll be able to join us for that and join Emmanuel as we continue our mission in the city for good. During these challenging times, we are grateful to have this opportunity to come together as community. Let us make confession to God and hear the words of grace and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus, as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen.
The Lord be with you. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I will pray. assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The Lord shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever.
They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. The second lesson is a reading from Romans, chapter 4. St. Paul writes, The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be his heirs, flesh is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be promised to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what God had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now, the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who, was ra who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel for today comes in the Gospel of Mark immediately after Peter had confessed his belief that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. 
He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Promises, promises. Abram probably thought God is showing signs of old age because God kept coming back one more time. First, it had been when he was in that land of Ur and God had come to him and said, I'm going to make you a great nation. Just you got to travel 600 miles up to Canaan. And then there was the time when God said, hey, come on out side at night and look up at the stars of the sky. You will have more descendants than you can see. And here God is at it again, one more time. And at this point in the story, Abram, well, in fact, he's given a new name, Abraham. And to go along with it, Sarai, his wife, is given the name of Sarah. And Abram, we, we actually don't have all the details of the story. I, I read a shortened version. In, in the, the full version, Abraham actually is sort of like, excuse me, I think I've got this covered. He's, he says, oh, Ishmael, As in case God had forgotten. Abraham had, had taken matters into his own hand when some time had passed by and there had been no son and Sarah had been barren, and so he'd asked for Hagar, and he got a son from Hagar. And so he's like, that Ishmael might live in your sight, i.e. be the one. And God, in this third time of coming with the promises, makes clear, no. I don't need what you did to try to affect things. Not that Ishmael is not welcome in the biggest picture of the world. But when God made a promise to Abraham, it was that his wife would have a son. And so he is explicit now. Sarah will be blessed and Sarah will have Abram's son. And it does come with a, a, a great promise that walk before me and I will be God to you and to your offspring. And it is from this that God becomes known, Yahweh, the God of the Hebrew scriptures, becomes known as the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, because God had never entered in that, into that intimate individual relationship before. So it's not just going to be something for Abraham, but God will be God for his descendants. You know, Paul wants us to look at Abraham and admire Abraham's faith. And indeed, there are two stories to remember when quintessential stories of the faith that Abraham had. The very first is the start of his story. When God says down there in Ur to go, and scripture says, and Abram went. What kind of faith does it take? It wasn't the promise of better economic conditions. All God says is, go and I will make you a great nation. 
doesn't promise it will be easy, but Abram goes. Now, Abram's not perfect. I said that, and reality is he, in more than one way, felt like he had to, to control things. So there came a point when, they, when Abram took the, the clan down to Egypt, and he worries about Sarah's position. So he introduces her to the Pharaoh as his sister. Now tell me, how is that going to help? How is that in line with God's promises? It's not. But don't give up on Abraham yet. And indeed, after all of these stories, there come the second story, and it's difficult. But it again shows Abraham's faith. Because God comes to him and again says, go. And this time he says, take your son, your only son, Isaac, Sarah's son, whom you love and offer him as a burnt offering. Difficult story, strange story, painful story. And yet we read, so Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took his men and his son Isaac, cut wood, and set out to the place God had shown him. He trusted in God. His faith was not simply a, a matter of the heart or an intellectual believing. It was so deep, it could give, it could cause him to act in ways that we can find incredible. But they show his faith. And of course, the sacrifices of his son, once Abraham had sh not proven to God, but had shown how much he trusted so that he could see how great his trust was, even Isaac could see there's the ram caught in the thicket that becomes the sacrifice. So Abraham had faith and he, he took action. Likewise, Peter. Peter, who just before our gospel has taken all of what he's learned, watched Jesus in the, the miracles, the teaching, and when Jesus says, you know, who do people say that I am? And the response is, no, prophet, Elijah. And Jesus pushes the point, who do you say that I am? It is Peter who, who voices what maybe the others were too scared to say or too unsure, but he says, you are the Christ, the Messiah. The one, in other words, anointed by God, sent by God to bring God's word, God's kingdom into the world. What a high point. And yet then we have today's story where when Jesus then lays out the plan, namely that the path he's going to travel instead of being Ur to Canaan, it is going to be from where they are now to the cross, to suffering and death. And Peter can't take it. And Peter, so Peter takes Jesus aside. It's as if he's like, you know, excuse me, I think we need to tweak your plan. That doesn't sound so good. You need to leave that part out. But Jesus is not going to cut corners. He's not going to make it easier. And so he, he not only puts Peter firmly where he needs to be, namely behind him, but he turns back to, to his closest friends and the crowd to lay it out there that it is necessary. There's a must to this, to be part of the reign of God, of the kingdom of God. It's not possible to do that and for Jesus not to suffer and die. We are, as Paul points out, we are invited we, to be, through our baptism, descendants of Abraham. And to us is therefore given the gift of faith by the Spirit. 
And we are also going to be cautioned that just like those great ancestors, we too will be tempted and sometimes give in to temptation to twist things to suit the way we think they should be. Whether it is because we think it makes economic sense, that it fits success by what we think success should be, whether it is more comfortable, familiar. But the way of the cross is to follow Jesus and the musts and the need tos that are following Jesus are going to be ministry of healing, ministry of reconciliation, of not laying out who's the enemy and who is the friend, but instead, Peter, of course, wasn't forever set aside. It was only that he was corrected. Jesus welcomes us. We are in our Lord, both, as Luther put it, simul justus et peccator, we are both sinful, where we will be tempted to wrest control from God and do it our way, but we are also righteous before God. And we can trust in God. We do not need to, to force things, but if we continue to look out for what the gospel that Jesus brought, the good news that the sick will be healed, the poor will be fed and clothed, we will find ways to encourage people to be well, whether it is by resisting sharing illness and so persisting with masks and social distancing, perhaps encouraging healing by encouraging the vaccine, not seeing it as something to be scared of. The future will always have uncertainty, but to strive for healing for all people, for good news, for those in prison, for those who are too poor to always have that social distance. How can we be agents of healing and wholeness, of shalom? And there will be times when people will look on us as if we have no idea how to make it in the world. But if we are not giving in to what looks like success to those in power, but would not be Jesus' way, then we can know that what can feel like a time of testing is also a time of discovering that our faith can deepen. We have been invited into an amazing family of God, not only to be brothers and sisters in Christ, but through this faith we have in Christ to discover we are, in fact, of the family of Abraham. We are part of a family of those to whom God says, go, and may we find ways to go in that path of the cross. In Jesus' name, amen.
relying on the promises of God. We pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and to join you in tending to creation's well-being. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace with justice, both within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities that we cannot even imagine. We pray for all countries where there is insurrection and violence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, foster parents, and children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We await Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all your saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. This time, I invite you, if you're in a room with someone, to share the peace with them. And if you're alone, to know that the peace of God transcends time and place, and that pray that you will feel and be surrounded by that peace. We will now also hear the offering peace that's being offered to us. This time, we would normally pass the plate, but obviously that isn't going to happen. So we ask that you would reflect on God's gifts to you, and we are grateful for your support for Emmanuel whether you are giving by mailing in, and we are so grateful for the faithful giving, or through our website, through the tithely offering. We are grateful for the continued support of our ministry as we seek to be in the city for good. May you continue to know God's blessings during this time of separation, your tithes and offerings. Yes, yes.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Oh.